29th, 2022, Nintendo hosted yet another typical Nintendo Direct, showcasing new content and upcoming games for the year. Of course, like every Direct, lots of speculation began to surface before it premiered, but more specifically, Mario Kart was a hot topic. You see, lots of rumors were spread around saying Mario Kart 9 was in development and had this huge big twist. So with those rumors in mind and all the Mario Kart talk floating around, I just knew something was cooking for Mario Kart. I sat in my chair waiting for the Direct to start, hoping and praying that Mario Kart would get this new amazing content we've all been waiting for for so long. And leave it to Nintendo to fulfill that request in the most Nintendo-like way. So yeah, uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is getting DLC. An enhanced port of an eight-year-old game is getting DLC after almost five years of being on the market. Why am I not surprised? So Nintendo, being the company that they are, announced that Mario Kart 8 will be getting remastered courses steadily till the end of 2023 with the Booster Course Pass. And uh, let's just say this announcement was uh, fairly split, to say the least. On the one hand, you have the people that are stoked after years and years of racing on these same old tracks, we're finally getting some new content to sink our teeth into. But on the other hand, you have the people that are actually pretty disappointed waiting so long for some new Mario Kart action, only for it to be DLC for a Mario Kart game that's gotten really stale for quite a few people. Lots of division and discussion have emerged since the Direct, and honestly, both sides have some pretty good arguments. I'm definitely more on the stoked side of things. I'm pretty excited to see what tracks they bring back. And another big plus for me is I never got to experience all of Mario Kart Tour's exclusive tracks, mainly because when I saw that Diddy Kong was in a 40 buck bundle, I dropped the game. Like, literally, I dropped my phone because I was so stinking shocked. I really didn't think Nintendo would actually add DLC to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I mean, the game is almost five years old and I just thought it was too late at this point. But Nintendo bit the bullet. <laughs> they actually did it. Would I have preferred Mario Kart 9? Absolutely, no doubt about it. Will this satisfy my Mario Kart craving for a while though? Again, absolutely. Although I'm pretty stinking excited for the booster pass, there's still a lot of general thoughts, concerns, pros and cons that are going through my head. Again, this DLC announcement has striked up a lot of interesting discussions surrounding it. And being the passionate Mario Kart fan that I am, I wanted to throw my two cents into the discussion and cover just about everything revolving around this booster course pass. So that's my goal today. I wanna to talk about the ins and outs, the pros and cons, the good, the bad, and the ugly of the booster course pass. I usually don't do these types of discussions, but this was too interesting to me and I really couldn't pass it up. But let's stop drifting around the bush. Let's take a deep dive into Mario Kart 8's bittersweet booster pass. The first thing I want to ask is why so late? I feel like people would be a little more forgiving of the DLC if it was just released a couple of years earlier. Instead, what we got was Nintendo acting like a high school heartbreaker, leading us on for the last four years with anticipation of a new Mario Kart coming to the Switch. With every year following Mario Kart's release and no DLC in sight, it really felt like Nintendo was just keeping quiet and developing Mario Kart 9. So in some cases, I understand why people were a little disappointed in this decision. However, looking back in hindsight, it does make a lot of sense. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was, and still is, a non-stop seller, selling over 40 million copies and stands as the best-selling Switch game. My guess is Nintendo's original plan was to release Mario Kart 9 somewhere in the Switch's life, but seeing as though their port just kept selling and selling, they decided to hold off 9 for their next-gen console, and instead quickly planned and developed a solution to ride the Mario Kart 8 wave a little longer. Which is why I think they went with the quicker route of porting Mario Kart Tour's tracks and lowering the workload in the graphics and detail. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. All that to say, from a business standpoint, I think this is very smart. When you have a game that has a player base of over 40 million, I think the best decision would be to cater to that player base, continue the momentum, and make some very easy profit. It just kind of sucks that they waited for so long and got a lot of people's hopes up for a sequel. But in all honesty, I'm super happy with what we got. 48 additional tracks? It's really hard to complain about that. 
Knowing Nintendo, they could have just slapped on one wave of DLC, charged us 25 bucks, and been done with it, but no. They are giving us 48 more courses, which doubles the amount of content in the game, which is something that Mario Kart 8 will really benefit from. The last wave of new tracks we got was in 2015, and we've been racing on those same tracks for almost seven years now. It's a little overdue for some new tracks, if you ask me. And the pricing is not bad at all either. $25 to double the amount of racing is amazing. I'm sure Nintendo saw the success of the Fighters Pass for Smash Ultimate and decided to base its formula off that, and I have no complaints about it. It's been fun watching and seeing all the speculation surrounding it, and although it won't be as popular and exciting as the Fighters Pass, I still feel somewhat of a rush when anticipating and thinking about what tracks they're going to bring back. Then again, I may be a bit biased, mainly because I've always had a love for the retro tracks, and I always had that excitement of seeing which tracks they're going to bring back with each new entry in the series, but again, I think this is a smart way of doing it, and the best thing about it is we'll always have something to look forward to in terms of Mario Kart for a good while. Also, apparently the DLC tracks will be free to play in online races, and that's actually pretty surprising to me. I really don't know how you could complain about that. I mean, if you don't want to buy the pass, or you just don't have the money, or whatever, you still get the luxury of having access to these new tracks, which is surprising, yet very, very nice. It's cool to see Nintendo not wanting to cause division and a split with the player base and keep everyone on the same page, but again, I'm kind of shocked Nintendo is doing this. They're even going as far to say that only one person needs access to the course pass in order for people to play them in online friend lobbies and local wireless play, and in my eyes, that's a very welcomed addition to the pass. Overall, I think the booster course pass is 100% worth it, even though Nintendo was a little late with it. It's got loads of future content, good pricing, and the Mario Kart franchise has tons of fantastic tracks to bring back, so I think it's a no-brainer. It's a solid deal. There's really nothing to complain about, right? <laughs> well, almost. With the DLC announcement came lots of conversation regarding the way each track looks compared to Mario Kart 8's design, and some say they look plasticky or cheap or clay-like, and this is where things start to get a little more say it with me now, controversial. I don't think this needs much explaining, it's been talked about to death now, but basically from what we've seen, it's looking like the DLC tracks are being ported from Mario Kart Tour. I still find this very weird, like you would think Nintendo would just reuse assets from Mario Kart 8 of all things, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. I mean, just look at Toad Circuit, these assets look like they're straight out of the stop motion clay show Gumby. Okay, I might be slightly over exaggerating, but it's pretty obvious that these tracks have the clay-like, less detailed look of Mario Kart Tour with some enhancements. First of all, while I do agree that this is pretty lazy on their end, I really do think the reason for it was because of a sort of last minute decision to make DLC, basically being a rushed product. I think their goal here was to go quantity over quality and try to justify the track's design with the sheer amount they're making, and I'm pretty up in the air with this. Obviously I would have loved to see these get the proper original HD remakes Mario Kart 8 is known for, but saying these tracks look horrendous? I mean, I don't, I don't know, I really don't think they look that bad. Toad Circuit and maybe Choco Mountain look the most unfinished in my opinion, but I don't think they really look like the worst thing in the world. And they did announce the DLC a month before release, so there's a slight possibility that they might polish some things up a bit. But until I get my hands on the product, I don't think I'll be too quick to judge on the way the tracks look. Quite a few people are skeptical about all this, but in my opinion, just because the tracks don't look as good, doesn't mean they're not good additions. Another concern people have about the tracks is they won't be getting any new additions like gliding or anti-grav sections. And I know they didn't show any anti-gravity in the trailer, but I highly doubt this is going to happen. I don't think Nintendo is going to forget about their own game's main gimmick when bringing back these courses. I mean, I would be shocked if they did this. Some original courses have sections that could seamlessly add anti-grab to. 
Examples I'm talking about are like Waluigi's Pinball Machine where the balls roll around in, or GCN DK Mountain on the cliffside part, or even better, Mario Kart DS's Rainbow Road that has a loop-de-loop -loop and corkscrew already in the base course, so there's really no excuse for Nintendo to use their main gimmick. One final thought about the tracks is, I don't think the booster pass will be strictly limited by what's in Mario Kart Tour. Although it's very, very likely that'll be the case, Shroom Ridge is a prime example of this. So far, this is the only course that hasn't been seen or data mined in Tour, and it's looking like there's a lot of evidence that most, if not all of them, are coming from Tour, but I guess only time will really tell. I hope we're not limited, but even if we are, there's still some great picks to choose from. But I really do think Nintendo has more assets and stuff to pull from than just Tour. With the booster course pass, lots of things involving the tracks themselves have been the main concern for most. What they'll look like, how they'll fit in Mario Kart 8 with its gimmicks, and I think these are valid thoughts and concerns, but personally, at the end of the day, whether they don't look as good, or they don't have as much anti-gravity, or whatever, Mario Kart has some great tracks overall, even with their original designs. I mean, we're getting 48 extra tracks with lots of amazing choices to choose from, so really, I'm not the one to complain about this as much. However, if I'm gonna be nitpicky about one thing about this DLC, it's the lack of this. Or this. Or, or even this. Or, or what about, what about this? Okay, okay, what about, what about yeah, this Yeah, this could go on for a this? bit, but basically right. my point is, or, or what about this? tracks aren't the only or, thing or they could have ported over from Mario Kart Tour. Uh, or, or what about okay, so Mario Kart Tour. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I think it had potential to be one of the best Mario Karts out there, and I know that might be a hot take, but I really think it did. But instead, Nintendo had to fill the game with gotcha mechanics and a weird scoring system. However, I can't deny how much passion and love and content has been crammed into this one mobile game. Specifically, in the character roster and cosmetics. Like, oh my gosh. If Mario Kart 8 Deluxe got even just a quarter of what this game has, I, I would be happy. I would be satisfied. I get jealous just looking at all the stuff Mario Kart Tour gets, like, Funky Kong? King bob Om, Nabbit? Charge and Chuck, are you serious? Mario Kart 8 has what? Larry Koopa? Freaking Pink Gold Peach? Lots of people have been speculating that characters from Tour could be making an appearance in this DLC, and I think it's very likely, just not in this booster pass. The DLC we are getting is a booster course pass, so if they were to do something like this, I feel like they would go with a separate DLC pack in the future. It is interesting to me though that they didn't bring over any characters, carts, and gliders. Like, you would think that would almost be easier to port over compared to full scaled tracks. Now, I ain't no professional programmer or game developer, but seeing as though they already have the character models, rigs, animation, and even voice clips, I feel like this would take minimum effort. Obviously, there would need to be some upscaling and polish, but I feel like most of what they need is already right here. I mean, at the very least, they could add costumes and cosmetics to already existing characters and just keep the original animations. And the carts and gliders would be super easy to implement, I would think. The Booster Pass is a good way of preserving all of Mario Kart's Tour's exclusive tracks and work that's been done, but I feel like the same could be said about all the characters and animations they've made as well. I think it makes perfect sense to put these assets to some better use and make a lot of fans happy. If not in this game, then definitely in a sequel down the line. I just can't express how nice these additions would be. Yes, the tracks we're getting will be super, super nice to have, but tracks aren't the only thing that spice up Mario Kart, and I think a lot of people are experiencing Mario Kart 8 burnout at this point. Even though we're getting new content in the form of tracks, the engine, meta, items will all be the same. I think adding new tracks over new characters and carts was the right call in the end, but even just adding a couple of DLC character and cart packs in the near future would go a long way. Personally, I think Mario Kart 8 Deluxe could use a boost in this department. Right now, the meta is pretty stinking boring if you ask me. Then again, all Mario Kart meta is pretty stale. 
I can only race against so many Waluigi's in the Wild Wiggler for so long, but with all that being said, I really think adding more characters and carts has a good chance of happening. If they can port over full on tracks from Mario Kart Tour, they most definitely could do it with the cosmetics too. Well, there you have it. Those are some of my thoughts on Mario Kart's Booster Course Pass. In conclusion, I'm super happy with what we got, and it's just insane to me that we're literally getting 48 more tracks. Even though this delayed Mario Kart 9 even further, this will satisfy me for a good while, and I'm super stoked to get my hands on it. From a business standpoint, I really do think this is the smart move here, and for the most part, I think they're giving us a quality product for a game that really deserves it. Some tracks I would love to see are Airship Fortress, Mario Kart 7 Rainbow Road, Waluigi Pinball, Waluigi Stadium, Mushroom Gorge, DK Summit, DS Bowser's Castle, GBA Sunset Wilds, just to name a few. But what do you guys think? Are you a fan of the past? Are you against it? I would love to hear all your thoughts and predictions down below in the comments. But with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you want to support me in any way, just liking, sharing, subscribing is greatly appreciated. But again, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll hopefully see you guys here soon.